Welcome to another Two Minute Tuesday with Certus. Today we're going to be covering tenability. We'll look into what it means, what the commonly adopted criteria are for means of escape and firefighting phases, and also we'll give you some pointers on where you can look for more information. Let's roll the intro. First of all, let's put two minutes on the timer. There are about three definitions of tenability, but the one we're interested in is capable of enduring or being tolerated. When we're discussing tenability in relation to smoke control, we're usually talking about the conditions in the protected lobby. When a building has been designed in accordance with approved document B, there's usually no requirement to assess tenability because the building is code compliant. However, when we take an alternative route and rely on guidance, we have a fire engineered system, and this requires us to assess the effectiveness of the smoke control system. So we do this using a computational fluid dynamic, or CFD, and this assessment of effectiveness also includes the assessment of the tenability. When assessing tenability, the main elements we're analysing are visibility distance, toxicity levels, exposure gas temperature, and thermal radiation flux, also known as irradiance. Whilst there's not definitive limits set, there are commonly adopted criteria which fire engineers use to assess tenability. For the means of escape phase, and this is the phase where the occupants are evacuating the building, the criteria are as follows, and a quote from the SCA guide. The exposure gas temperature and thermal radiation flux or irradiance limits of 60 degrees Celsius and 2.5 kilowatt per meter squared, along with 10 meters visibility, represents typical acceptance limits in respect to tenability for means of escape. Where these limits are exceeded, the travel time to the stair door should be assessed for suitability. There are also criteria for how long it should take to return a zone to tenability, and again I quote from the SCA guide. A time-dependent analysis will be required to determine how long it takes to return the corridor to a specified visibility or other tenability criteria once the apartment door has closed. A maximum time of two minutes should be achieved. The tenability criteria for the firefighting phase of the fire is somewhat different, and this is because firefighters have PPE, or personal protective equipment. However, there is a chart provided by the SCA guide, which is adopted by the Australian Fire Authorities Council, AFAC and I'll link that below because it gives some guidance on tenability limits for firefighters. It's worth noting that at all times, during both the means of escape and the firefighting phases, the stair core must be free of smoke. Finally, I promised some places you could look to get some more information on tenability. The list is quite long, so I've put it in the post, but it's safe to say that a good place to start is the SCA guide and the 2020 revision. I hope this has been a helpful overview of tenability and the commonly adopted criteria. If you've got any questions, just drop me a line and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.